Well, Specialized have just announced a new model for their manufacturer to customer. And what they've added is a direct to customer model, which is very similar to the Ventium bikes and also the Kenyan type bikes. And what they're also saying is, is that there, if you require it, there is also a contractor that you can get that will come and assemble the bike at your home and also give you the basic things of how the bike works and maybe even a bike fit and whatever. So there is adding that option. Now, the, the other option is as it used to be, you walk into a bricks and mortar shop, which is a specialized dealer, and you go have a look at the bike and you go, yeah, I like that one, and you sell on the bike, which is basically like a walk-in. And then there's the third one where someone may buy it on the specialized website, like they do with a direct customer, and you will decide to pick it up from a shop. And a lot of uh, manufacturers or, or companies have this, you know, you order something and you can pick it up from any shop around the country and you say, send it to that shop. Okay, so that's the three different models now Specialized have. Well, before we get any deeper into why Specialized have done this or why, how this is gonna affect their, the retail shops, let's just have a little bit of a wind back to when, back in the old days, what one of those was is you couldn't sell out of your, your region. So let's just say I was in Perth, WA, and someone rings me up from over there in Sydney in New South Wales and goes, hey, Wayno, how are you going? I go, oh, good mate, you're good mate. I go, I've just seen on your website you've got a specialized in this this metallic fleck red whatever the color it is um, they haven't got any in new south wales can you send that over now this bike is a current model i would have to say to them no i can't because i'm not allowed to sell outside my region i can't put it in a box and send it to them because then i've breached the company's requirements and I could lose my distributorship. So it limits where you can sell your bikes to, even though someone wants to pay full price, he's in another state, he can't get his color, you're the only one with that color, then bad luck for that person and bad luck for you. And the other requirement was, is that you have to have a certain amount of inventory. So let's just say Specialized had 10 models in their bikes and maybe four S works, you had to have one of all of those bikes. So you had to have a significant amount of inventory and the manufacturer insisted on you maintaining that stock. And then of course, when the new models came out, even though you had the old stock and you may not have sold it all, then you have to have the new stock as well. So a significant outlay that the bike shops had to have, obviously, so people can see the product and they come in, they can touch it, they can feel it, they can have a close look at it, they can see what's on it, they can see how the, the gears work and everything. They can even take it for a ride and see how it rides. And obviously this is one of the services that the bike shops offered, but Specialized kind of enforced that on them, which obviously is a cost to the shop. Now we're back in 2022 where we've got these new models. Now there is a few, I see a few issues with this and one of the issues are is that Specialized are giving a reduced amount of money to the bike shops for carrying out tasks that they did in the past. So the first one is let's just say that I ordered, I rang up Specialized on their website or went on their website and I clicked put in cart, SL7, metallic red, chung, and they send it to me. And I say, hey, look, I don't, I don't want to put it together myself. These bikes are getting too complicated. I want to have someone put it together. And just say that bike shop, which is my nearest specialized bike shop, put it together. Well, they will not get the full amount of money that Specialized would have given them in the past or similar. They're getting a 75% amount, so they're getting less money because they're arguing that they didn't sell the bike I bought it through Specialized, so they're giving a reduced margin because they didn't do the marketing for that bike. The second thing is, is let's just say I went on their website and I didn't want it delivered to me, I wanted it delivered to a shop 
which was my closest shop and I was going to pick up from the shop and I wanted it assembled again, then the same thing happens, they get a reduced amount of money. So the only way the bike shop's going to get the full amount of money is if I get a walk-in into the shop, I have inventory on the floor and or I've been asked to order it and I put it together and then I give it to the customer. Now, one of the other issues that we kind of glossed over is warranties. Now, companies don't like to cover warranties. They like to say, oh, that's fair wear and tear, or they like to say that wasn't serviced properly, or you, you did that, you had a crash or something, that's, not, that, that's, that's fair use, right, whatever. Now, what gets me is if you've done the final assembly yourself and you know you may not have had a torque you just did it like you know the hand calibration and even if you did buy the torques and even if you did put it together could these manufacturers use that and say hey you didn't put it together properly and then you got an argument now you could say yes i did i bought the torque spanners and i used them but how are you supposed to prove or establish that you actually did the the proper assembly on the bike when the manufacturer is disputing it to say, this wouldn't have broken if you had done it properly. And they could make that claim and say, we're not going to carry out a warranty, or that seat post broke, or that steerer failed because you didn't put the cabling and everything through the puck in the right way, and all these sorts of things. It gives the manufacturer another out if something goes wrong with the bike. And that's why if I was buying a new bike, even if I knew exactly how to put it together, I wouldn't put it together because if you've got an approved contractor and an approved shop or approved someone who's assembled that bike and you roll it out the, out the shop and that's it, then you, they, can't, they can't claim you did something wrong when you put it together. So that is one of the other question marks I see because, because these direct-to-customer models are fairly new and Canyon's probably the big name that's been doing it for now for some years and we've also had the debacle with the with the handlebars and the stop rod and the seat post already. Um, I don't know how people are going to manage that. Now you probably go oh yeah but these bikes don't have too many problems but actually they do they have quite a lot of recalls you don't hear about them because normally they send the letters directly to the customers they're not announced, they don't announce them. They send, it's like even like car recalls, they send you letters to the owner and say, please bring the, the vehicle back and we got a recall on the airbag or whatever it is, steerer, whatever the thing is, and then they fix it. They don't like to advertise those sorts of things like through the media unless someone finds out about it. And even then it's probably not gonna get the same coverage if it's an independent type person. You might, <laughs> you might say that I'm a bit of a old fuddy-duddy in that, but uh, I like to go to, I like to buy stuff in bricks and mortars, whether it be a bicycle, whether it be this camera that I've got right in front of me. I don't like to order things online. Now, I know there's some advantage to ordering things online, you can get things quicker and all that, but to me, it's putting people out of jobs. So you may not give a, give a crap about that, but I do. I think that uh, if there's more people employed, we supporting more employees, there's more money that's being given from that product and then there's more money in the economy, etc, etc. And there's more money being spent locally. So I like to support bricks and mortar shops. Now, you might go, yeah, it's great and it's convenient if it gets delivered to my door, a guy rolls up in a van, puts it together, I don't even have to get in my car and go and get it. So uh, there is a convenience factor to the customer. Now, what I think Specialized could have done in this case is offered that exact same model but brought their their dealers along with them what they could have said is they could have said okay then you've got a bike shop and we're going to have regions like like a pizza shop does you know when you have you ring up a a general number it puts you through to your local pizza shop and they've got a special area that they deliver in and that's why that phone call went to that that shop because they deliver in that area. They could have had the same thing with Specialized. So if someone rings up and says, I want to deliver to my, or, or not rings up, they go on their little website, puts the red metallic SR7 in the cart, wants it delivered to my door and I want it assembled. Then it could go to the bike shop 
they assemble it, he puts it in his van, he delivers it to your door all ready to go and he could even probably show you a bit about the bike, all the new things, the tech, give you a bike fit, all the rest of it. So they could have brought the dealers along with them in that format and when it comes to also going to the to the specialized website and allowing them to be pick it up from that store because that store still needs to handle it they still need to unpack it they still need to assemble it and they're also still going to give you that added service of how the bike works when to bring it in for servicing uh, probably a basic bike fit they still should get the full money that they got before and of course they they could have modeled it in that way so the the distributors were part of the whole process but what they haven't done that when it's direct to your door they you could potentially have someone that is not even a specialized dealer it could be just some gen, general bike put together contract we don't know what they're going to do yet and of course those people who come around in vans are going to have no buy-in for return business they're going to just say what's the cheapest price the specialized are going to say what's the cheapest price i can get someone to assemble it for and it's going to be like a contractor thing where the lowest price go, who gets it gets the job. Now, the problem with all that is that those contractors don't get all of the training and backup and, and repeatable work working on the same bikes to really know how they work. You're going to get someone who may be working for Ventium one day, working for Kenyon another day, working for Specialized another day. And there's probably more manufacturers that are going to go this way and they're probably going to share these contractors and they're going to do it for the minimum price and obviously the minimum price you get the minimum job. But that may be just my opinion because I'm a little bit of an old fuddy-duddy. So leave your comments down below. Do you think this new model is just the future? This is the way we're going and Specialized is just moving into the future and bike shops need to suck it up because this is 2022 and this is the new world? Or do you think that Specialized should have had a little bit more empathy for their long-term dealers which have been with them for decades? Some of these, there was one guy I was reading and he'd been with Specialized for 25 years. Do you think that they should have had a bit more empathy and brought them along with the new model? Well, anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. It's a bit of a sticky one, this, because yes, people are demanding stuff be delivered to their doors. And yes, people want the convenience, but also people want quality as well. And I think that's something that we're giving up with all of this, this new modern delivery of product. And we also need to remember when something does go wrong with the bikes, as far as design and manufacturing floor we've had with Canon, it becomes a whole debacle. How do you, where do you take these bikes to get them repaired? Where do you take these bikes for the new bit to get taken out and replaced? And who's the distributorship? Or are we gonna get someone who's a completely different bike shop working on a bike they've never worked on before? And that's when it all kind of goes down like, like a house of cards. Okay guys, that's my opinion on it. Leave your comments down below and I will see you next vid.